Here is a special message from Walter Hackney, director of the Slaughter Cattle Division. Well, thank you, Phil. I feel more inclined now, possibly than any other time in the past, to relay to you as producers and members of this organization that we have in the grasp of our hand the most opportune opportunity that this organization has ever been presented with. For one thing, you have a program in cows and in slaughter cattle that is finished as far as the blocking, the moving, the dispatch, all types communication, the professionalism and so forth that is required to make that program work, it's completed for you to take advantage of now. But I believe more importantly, you have new leadership now in the National Farmers Organization. Devon Woodland has just been appointed the president of your organization. And I can assure you that we here in the home office feel totally elated to have the opportunity to work with Devon. He has my total trust. He has my total cooperation. My staff have all expressed an extreme desire to work and work hard for Devon Woodland. Consequently, they're going to be working hard for you. But I think at this time, I feel it's necessary for you as members in the rural areas of this nation to recognize the extreme optimism that we here in the Home Office feel toward this new leadership that we are looking forward to in Devon Woodland. And I hope and I pray that you as members will recognize this desire we have here to make this organization fly for you. And I hope you'll take that enthusiasm that we have to the country and I hope that you will express this new leadership and these proven finished commodity programs to your non-member neighbors or to those member neighbors who for one reason or another have not been participating. I hope you express this new enthusiasm that we feel here in the Home Office toward the new leadership in Devon that we have with him as a president. And now Ed Gra, director of the Dairy Commodities Department. After long discussions with the executive board and the national board on what would be in the best interest of NFO collective bargaining for farmers, the resignation of President Staley was accepted. As director of the Dairy Department, I know that this resignation by Mr. Staley was given by him at this time to help unite farmers. In his resignation, he encouraged all farmers to unite and support NFO collective bargaining through a structure that can now give farmers a chance to price their products. I can say, as director of the dairy department, that this department can and will give farmers the opportunity to establish fair dairy prices and stabilize those prices just as soon as farmers unite their dairy production through the NFO Dairy Department. Here is Dave Miller, head of the Feeder Cattle Division. As director of the Feeder Cattle Division, I regret very much the retirement of President Orrin Lee Staley. However, I have full and complete confidence in our new president, Devon Woodland. I assure the membership of the National Farmers Organization that we will continue to grow and build the programs of the Feeder Cattle Division with the participation of ever-increasing numbers of farmers and ranchers expressing their farm power through the National Farmers Organization. Today, feeder cattle prices are at cost of production levels. You and I must work as never before to increase the volume of feeder cattle through your organization and forward contract those cattle to hold up the price in the future.
We present Ralph Kittleson, director of the Grain Department. NFO is a new system for and by farmers, the only one. And it would never have been any good if it were put together for just one generation. It was meant to be for the one purpose of allowing all future generations of farmers the dignity, dignity of running their own business, too. So it's full steam ahead in the grain department. Let's keep building that volume for cost of production plus a profit. We present now Tim Ennis of the Specialty Commodities Division. I personally want to express my thanks and admiration for President Staley, who I know has been personally responsible under tremendous pressure over his years as president for keeping the National Farmers Organization on the right path towards our original goal. In the specialties department, the number of acres committed by NFO members to the NFO programs in sunflowers, edible beans, millet, and western hay is a key indicator of the momentum in the specialties department for the months ahead. Following a record movement of sunflower seeds at 1978 harvest and a record sales month in edible beans in December, we have very good momentum to increase these record volumes. Members must market continuous volume in order to be successful in bargaining programs. We are going to continue to push as rapidly as the membership's cooperation will support to achieve the common goal of NFO members and our new president, Devon Woodland. Here is Alan Straw, director of the Hog Division. As a former board member and an employee of many years, I wish to express my sincere thanks to Orrin Lee Staley, former president of the NFO, for the leadership that he has given me. It took us three years in the Hog Division to develop the nation's most complete marketing and bargaining program for hogs. I am looking forward now to working with our new president, Devon Woodland, in continuing to develop this program. Devon and the members will be able to count on the hog department staff to work and to further the hog program. The program that will enable us as hog producers to say, this is the price. We are looking forward to 1979 and 1980 because producers are now in a position to cause it to happen. And now the new president of the National Farmers Organization, Devon Woodland. This is his brief closing statement to the NFO National Board meeting at Corning, Iowa, when he took office succeeding Orrin Lee Staley. President Devon Woodland. I certainly don't want to detract from anything that Orrin Lee has said. I don't think there's a man that ever walked that has touched the lives of more people than he has. I don't think that there has ever been a smoother transition of leadership in any organization. Not only between he and I, but between the department directors and the staff that they have. And I just want to assure you as the directors and the members out in the country that the goal of this organization has not changed. Being that someday we'll price our product. The ultimate goal. The time frame that we are operating in would indicate to us that we have to involve ourselves immediately to reach that goal. The continuity, the stability of the programs will be unmarred by this transition. And I plead with the members of this organization to do what they know has to be done. We can give the leadership, the coordination, but they must decide in their minds and the decision will be made by them whether we succeed or fail. I'm confident in my mind that we have got every reason to believe that victory is attainable. If I didn't believe that, I wouldn't go to the slaughter like a lamb. I'd bow out. But I believe it can be done. 
It isn't going to be done by a few of us doing it. And the job is not large, but it's a bunch of people, masses, each doing a little bit. And if you will assure me that this is what you will do, I'll assure you I'll do my part. I think our work's cut out for us. We know what has to be done. And you directors, as you go back to your states and to your areas, and you talk to your people, I encourage them to believe you as they have never believed you before. Thank you.